In this video, we'll explore the single degree of freedom system, commonly referred to as the simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, let's begin with a diagram. Draw a support to which we're going to attach a mass. Um, we'll call this mass M. And we'll assume it's attached through a linear spring to the support here. The linear spring has stiffness K, and then this is fixed. We'll put in a coordinate system here, x pointing downwards, positive downwards. Okay, the first step is to draw the free body diagram. Let me change the color on this. Free body diagram. And the idea is, is to cut the mass away from all its attachments and replace that with a force. So if this is the mass here, the only force you have opposes the displacement x, that's your spring force, which we'll call F sub s, and it's equal to minus k x. The negative sign is due to the fact that it opposes the displacement, that means it's a restoring force. Let's go back to yellow. Alright, so we start off by writing Newton's second law. Let's see if I can print that quickly, there we go. Newton's second law. Okay. All right. Newton's second law says that M A, or in this case, simply M X double dot. Why is this not writing? Let's see. Let's try it again. So M x double dot is equal to your force. So in this case, it's just the spring force, which equals minus k times x. We choose to rewrite this by moving everything over to one side. mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero. Call that equation one. That's in the correct. Equation 1. Okay. In fact, I'm going to write this equation at the top because we're going to be using it again and again. So let me... Hmm, let's make it part of this layer. And I'll write it up here. That m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0. This is a second-order differential equation. As a result, we will have two constants of integration. And in order to solve for these constants, we need two initial conditions. The initial conditions, very simply, are that the position x at time 0, we will just call x 0. Call this equation 2. And then the derivative, x dot, the velocity at 0, is equal to v0. V or that number three. So the idea is, the one up here again, we would like to find a solution to one subject to the initial conditions two and three. We can write up here that these are ICs. Okay. So now casting your mind back to calculus, differential equations, we go about solving this by assuming that x of t by the way, x is always a function of t here, but for brevity, we've decided just to drop the t, keep it a little bit neater. But x of t looks something like constant times e to the rt. Of course, the derivative, x dot of t, is then equal to c r e to the rt. And of course, the double derivative, the second derivative, is equal to c r squared e to the r t. And of course, the idea with exponentials is each time you take the derivative, you simply just multiply by r. So moving forward, we uh, substitute, let's call this equation 4 and equation 5. If we substitute 4 and 5 into equation 1, so 4 and 5, 
into equation one, we then get m r squared c e to the r t plus k c e to the r t is equal to zero. Well, we can cancel c e to the r t since we know that those are non-zero, because if c was zero, we would just have a trivial solution. And what we end up with is m r squared plus oops, k equals zero. And let's remember that m and k are both greater than zero. They're both positive, uh, positive uh, real numbers. This is known as the characteristic equation. Let's write that in here. And the, the answer to this is really just from high schools, the answer to a second order polynomial, uh, the roots of a second order polynomial. So this is equal to um, plus or minus the square root of minus 4 times m times k all over 2m. And that's r equal to this. Okay, a bit of simplification. Those cancel. And what you're left with is the square root of k over m times i. All I did here is I took the negative sign, I separated it, and of course the square root of negative 1 is just i. Remember that k and m are both positive, and we can also rewrite this as omega n times i. It should be plus or minus root. This would be r1 and 2. All right, so just to make a bit of space here, what's the easiest way to do that? We'll just delete this. So that's not working. So all I'm going to do is just turn off this layer to make some space. We can continue here. So let me rewrite very quickly what we have. Oof. Okay. We know. Well, it doesn't work. Okay. So we know that R1 and 2 is equal to plus minus omega n times i. And that means, going back to our original definition of x, x of t, is equal to c1e to the r1t plus c2e to the r2. T. Substituting that in, we end up with C1e to the i omega n t plus C2e to the minus i omega oops, n t. Okay. Then using Euler's law, remember Euler's law? Using Euler's law, get this down here. we can rewrite the following. Euler's law, let me remind you, says that uh, e to the i omega t plus or minus okay, is equal to k 
cosine omega n omega oops, we don't need the n in this case t plus or minus depending on the sign i sine omega t substituting this equation into here allows us to rewrite it as follows x of t is equal to and i'm just going to use a different constant here a1 cosine omega n t plus sine of omega n t and i've left out my constant here a2 and these are subject to the initial conditions which i'll repeat x of 0 equals x0 and x dot derivative is equal to b0. Okay, So, substituting the first one, x of 0, well, cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, so all you're left out here is a1 is equal to x0. Similarly, by taking the derivative, you get minus a1 times 0, because this is sine, and sine of 0 is 0, plus a2 cosine of omega n t. This is 1. Excuse me, I didn't put the derivative here left out my omega, and that is equal to v0. So what this leads to is a2 is equal to v0 over omega n. So then the final solution, putting it all together, I'm going to write it up here, is that x of t is equal to x0 which is your constant, cosine omega nt plus v0 over omega n sine omega nt. That is your solution.